Greetings everyone, Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Ranking the Albums. Today we're going to take a look at a uh, very interesting band that uh, somewhat rose to prominence from Ohio in the very early 70s, then disappeared for a lot of years, then came back, started doing some stuff once again. In, their, in the band is a, uh, a highly talented guitar player named Phil Kege, Phil Kege. The band is Glass Harp. Three albums released back in the very early 70s. Boom, boom, boom to start off the decade. Signed to Decca Records. Recorded their albums at the uh, Electric Lady Studios in New York City. Then broke up because Mr. Kegi became very much uh, into religion and Christianity and whatnot. He wanted to kind of go off and do his own thing. Became a very prominent musician on the Christian music scene. Right, much, much more of an acoustic guitar player later on, but uh, then the band decided to reform with the three original members. Oh, uh, in the 2000s, they did a bunch of touring and shows and live albums and recorded one studio album uh, in more recent times. So we've got four studio albums all together. I'm going to rank them as I like them. Uh, let me talk about the band first. So again, Phil Kagey. Phil Kagey, Kigi, however you want to say his name, on guitars and vocals. You've got uh, John Sfera on drums, vocals, and acoustic guitars. You've got Daniel Peccio on bass, vocals, and flute. Occasionally might have other guest musicians uh, joining on the albums, uh, either assisting with uh, you know, violin, viola, or some keyboards or strings and things like that. So uh, like I said, we've got four albums. I'm going to rank them from number four to number one. And I'm going to start off with, uh, at number four, uh, the only one that I do not have a physical copy of, and that's Hourglass from 2003. So this is their fourth album. Most recent studio album, yeah, that's 20 years ago already, right? But if you look at how many years before they actually went and did the studio album, because their last one was, I think, uh, 73, I think. So it's a long, long time, right? So uh, produced by the band for Special Friends Productions. Uh, interesting album. Really long. It's like 16 tracks on the album. It's like just about pushing the boundaries of the CD medium, right? Uh, in spots, much, much more rock-based. In spots, not so much. Um, very religious themed overall, which is not really surprising. You know, their music overall, even back in the day, had that spiritual aspect to of it. But then, of course, like uh, you know, Phil went and became such a prominent uh, person on the Christian music scene. It's not surprising that they still retain that all these years later. Uh, it starts off with uh, out of the box, pretty rocking. Seven in a box starts off out of the box with seven in a box, and uh, what in your heart? Uh, those are the first two tracks on the album. Those are both very rocking, lots of electric guitar firepower, even on uh, What's in Your Heart. You even got some uh, some horns there as well. Pretty interesting stuff. Uh, then you got like You Whisper Something. Uh, goes back to their early sound. They have this thing, uh, because all three guys contribute vocals, uh, they have this very strong kind of like Beatles, Crosby, Stills, and Nash Young thing going on as far as like vocal harmonies, maybe even... Uh, um, Oh, God, a little America. And those bands that did, like, uh, it, certainly the Vanilla Fudge, you're going to hear me mention the Vanilla Fudge quite a bit, uh, especially their earlier stuff I hear on the vocal harmonies. I hear a lot of Vanilla Fudge going on. Um, but good stuff. you got Ever Everlasting Light, kind of similar to that as well. Um, you know, kind of more acoustic in nature, just kind of poppy, folky, lots of uh, breezy arrangements and lots of vocal harmonies, lush acoustic guitars, really cool. Uh, in Every Cathedral uh, is more like kind of Christian hard rock. Nice guitar textures, even some heavy riffs and spots. It's fairly long. I think it's like seven minutes long. Uh, Eastern Star, that kind of bores me. Uh, Image, kind of nice song, kind of lush, enjoyable. Nice chord changes on the guitars. Melodies are total, like Beatles love, you know, we appreciate that. Uh, that Way is fun. Some additional, like again, they do a really good job on this album of uh, producing those vocal harmonies. Uh, some nice guitar work from Phil Kagey as well. Uh, Voice of God, Call Out. So over seven minutes, lots of impressive guitar textures, colors, and solos from Kagi. Uh, what Matters Most, that's pretty good. I Love All Life, kind of like a country tune. They have that little bit of country rock thing in their music as well from and some of their songs. That's definitely that. Probably my least favorite song on the album. Uh, Weather Boy is late in the CD. That's a cool, up-tempo, catchy, hard rock song. I like that a lot. 
sounds very 80s, right? Would have been perfect, at least in the 80s. Uh, if Love Is All We Got, another kind of Beatles-style song. You know, overall, and there's other songs on here I'm not going to touch on because they just don't really do much for me. But overall, it's an uneven album, but there are some good tracks on here, and I guess it's kind of good to hear them back after so many years, even though this was already 20 years ago. Um, but yeah, one of my biggest complaints about this album is just way too long, and just 16 songs, just you know i get they were away for a long time they were probably like you know bursting with creativity to write some new stuff but man 16 songs that's a lot and it's not like they were 16 songs and they're all two three minute though long pop tunes right these are like you know three four five six seven minute long songs so a lot of material here so that is my number four number three i'm gonna go to their second album from 1971 which is synergy okay once again still on uh, decca records here the first three albums all on Decca Records, produced by Louis Merenstein, or Merenstein. Produced all three of their original albums. All three were recorded, produced at Electric Ladyland Studios, or Electric Lady Studios in uh, New York City. Uh, this one opens up with uh, One Day at a Time. It's kind of like a, man, it's kind of like a haunting prog rock intro, and then some like ripping guitar work uh, from Phil comes in. Pretty cool song. Uh, I will tell you that Phil Kagey's guitar playing guitar tone on these first three albums especially electric guitar playing and i believe he plays a les paul mainly uh is incredible really incredible um how this guy was not like a household name back in the day i guess the eclectic nature of their music kind of prevented that this is not like uh most of the stuff is not like kind of like really mainstreamy stuff but man what a player holy cow Really, really good. Uh, then you got uh, Never Is A Long Time, which might be my favorite song from the band. Uh, funky, hard rocker. Uh, Phil's guitar work is incredible. Incredible on here. Great, cool, crunchy, snarling riffs. The solos are like technical and flashy and just really, really good. Uh, just Always, pure psychedelic folk. Bit too long for me, but not that bad. Uh, Special Friends is kind of chunky blues rock. Kind of sounds like the James Gang fun song. Kind of just, you know, like American, just bluesy, hard rock. Pretty cool. Uh, Coming Home, kind of country rock. Catchy harmonies. Also Song of Hope. Very similar. It's got those Crosby, Stills, Nash Young influences uh, a lot on this album. And actually all three of their early albums. Uh, some tasty guitar work from Kagi on that. Child of the Universe. Another country tinge number. Kind of mellow. Eh, it's nice enough. I'm not really a huge fan of it. Uh, Mountains has some nice acoustic guitar moments. Answer is brief, but again, more acoustic based. Nice acoustic work, though. Uh, and Closer, Dawn of the New Day, is a total kind of hook laden pop. I hear the Beatles, I hear the Monkees, I hear Bad Finger. Chorus is really good. Nice enough track. Um, good guitars on there as well. Uh, you can kind of tell, if you kind of read a little bit on the history of this band, you can kind of tell that, uh, you know, right around this time is where Phil's kind of Christianity is really starting to come to the forefront of what he's writing and what he wants to do. Um, and this would be a direction he would take on his solo career. But, uh, you know, to me, this is less of a rock album than the first album. It's a little more acoustic in nature. There's a little more of those kind of country twangy things coming in here and folk-based stuff, right? But the songs that do rock on here are really, really nice. I like, the, honestly, I with this band, I like their more rock-based stuff, definitely. But uh, but there's still some good stuff on here. It's definitely, definitely I can easily recommend it. It's, it's very solid. All right, so coming in at number two, I'm going to go with, this may surprise some, I'm going to go with their debut from 1970. It's just called Glass Harp. There they are right there. Again, Decca Records, produced by Louis Merenstein, Merenstein at Electric Lady Studios. Uh, Can You See Me starts off six and a half minutes. Very psychedelic. This album is very psychedelic. Um, it's, you know, you could argue that their first three albums, when you listen to them, you know exactly, like, what years they came from. Very has very dated the productions, dated the style is dated. It's very much a product. This album is very much a product of the late '60s psychedelic scene. Uh, you could swear you listen to this that you know could, these guys come from San Francisco, right? Because it really has that feel. Um, but this track is really good. Uh, like I said, you got dreamy lead vocals, very psych pop rock. Uh, you got these lilting guitar patterns. You got string arrangements on this album, which I actually I really like. I think they kind of work well by Larry Fallon. Uh, you got guest viola from uh, John Cale. You got flute on here, and then you know towards the midpoint, you know Phil drops in this rampaging guitar solo. Very cool song. 
psychedelic pop, prog, hard rock, all kind of blended into one. Very, very cool. Children's Fantasy uh, reminds me of Electrified, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. Very good song. Really good song. Soaring vocals, more of those ripping guitar leads. Man, when he comes in with guitar solos on these songs that, you know, are maybe kind of mellow and psych and folk-based, it's just like, it's like, where'd this guy come from? I mean, these just like bubbling, bursting electric guitar solos, just crazy stuff. Uh, Changes in the Heart of My Own True Love is a killer song. Uh, and it's got these dramatic strings which work out so well. It kind of reminds me in a weird way of like Blood, Sweat, and Tears and Santana and maybe a little Vanilla Fudge. Um, and, you know, especially on the vocals. You know, it's not like they're keyboard driven like Vanilla Fudge, but the, the way the three guys harmonize on the vocals reminds me a lot of Vanilla Fudge uh, right around the same time period. Uh, and then you got some outstanding flute and guitars. Really good song. Um, Kigi reminds me on this particular song of Terry Kath. And I think when, you know, the more I, I revisit these albums and was listening to them, I'm like, because to me, he always seemed very, very original, and he is. But at times, I hear a little bit of Terry Kath, and at times, I hear a little bit of Jan Ackerman, because he's got that real technical thing going on. Really, really great player. Uh, Village Queen, more of a hard rocker, reminded me of Vanilla Fudge again. Nice guitar licks. Maybe not as compelling as the songs that came before. It's kind of like meat and potatoes rock, but it's good. Um, Black Horse, acoustic folk piece is one of the weaker songs on the album for me. Not really big on that. Southbound, also mostly acoustic, but again, they add the strings, the Fallon strings and the flute, give it kind of like this mystical, almost proggy tone, which I find really, really interesting, kind of intoxicating, kind of like drifts along. Really, really cool. Uh, Whatever Life Demands. Surprising left reminds me of early Jethro Tull and early Spirit. If you like those two bands, I think you'll really dig this song. Uh, but the vocal harmonies, again, all sound like Vanilla Fudge. So figure, you know, you got the flute and you got acoustic and electric guitars, got that psychedelic kind of thing, that folky rock thing going on. And then those kind of three part harmonies, very much like the Vanilla Fudge. Uh, and then Phil comes in with this like totally kick ass blazing guitar solo, and you're like, whoa, listen to that guy roar. Really good. Uh, Look in the Sky, textured, moody, psychedelic pop song, more guitar solos, Garden pure psychedelic folk, lots of flute and viola, and then on the closing track, On Our Own, another mostly acoustic piece, uh, but save for uh, kind of like this electrified country rock solo from Phil, which is pretty interesting. So overall, you know, not 100% of this album totally works for me, but most of it does. The stuff that's good is really, really good. Um, and Kiggy's guitar work is just tremendous. Like I said, I, how people weren't talking about this guy more in the mainstream is just absolutely beyond me. But um, great, great stuff. Um, again, I, I'm sure this will be number one for a lot of people, and I really couldn't argue it much. I was surprised when I went back and re-listened to all these albums that um, the number one album, for me, my favorite, I think the strongest album start to finish, is the third album and the last one they did right before they broke up, which is It Makes Me Glad from 1972. So again, produced by Louis Merenstein at Electric Lady Studios in New York City. Uh, this to me is more of a total rock album for the most part. Uh, Seesaw opens. That's a little different because it's got like, it's like this haunting kind of folky you know music which was very prevalent on the second album but really nice acoustic guitar patterns really nice flute vocal harmonies really really well done kind of an interesting way to start off an album in this in this fashion then you got sailing on a river much much more rock based keggy has got these uh, complex electric guitar runs uh working alongside some really muscular bass and just light percussive touches uh and then you get a couple of blazing guitar solos in this one Excellent. Uh, La Di Da, part folk, part pop, part blues, part psych. Kind of reminds me of the Beatles meets the Grateful Dead from that time period. Pretty cool. Uh, really nice vocal harmonies. Really nice guitars. You got Cult is upbeat and groovy. Great bass line. Flute and guitars. Again, I'm hearing early Jethro Tull. Beatles, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young. One of my favorites on the album. Really, really cool song. Uh, CNU is dreamy and haunting pop. David and Goliath is a killer jazzy instrumental with some really interesting and intricate guitar noodling from Kigi. I wish it was longer. I would love to hear more stuff like that. Really, really good. Uh, I'm Going Home, more of a rocker. 
reminded me of kind of like upbeat traffic from similar time period, right? Even a little early Doobie Brothers. Great grooves, awesome vocals, tasty guitars, another highlight of this album. And then uh, Do Lord, another crisp hard rocker, great guitar licks, powerful vocals, uh, song in the air, breezy folk, amazing vocal harmonies, uh, and Let's Live Together is kind of like a fun country tinge rocker. Reminds me a lot of, uh, I don't want to call it Southern Rock because they're not from the South, but it reminds me of Revival by the Allman Brothers Band. The song is very much in that vein, very like kind of upbeat and kind of country and twangy and uh, a little R&B going on. And uh, and that song, Revival, is, from, is the first song on their Idlewild South album from the Allman Brothers. Very, very much like that. Really catchy, wonderful vocals, lots of tasty guitar soloing from, uh, from Phil. Um, to me, as a final album before a breakup, this one is really good, really good. And uh, you know, to me, when I listen to this this band, uh, you know, I don't know if any of these three albums are five out of five star classics. To me, I think if I take my favorite tracks from all of these albums and make one album, that's a pretty damn amazing album. On on their own, uh, I like a good amount of all of these. But to me, this band, I think, even you know, revisiting this stuff uh, after not hearing these for quite a while, um, I, it's, it's almost like this band like just really didn't know what they wanted to be. And I would argue that um, the kind of the band they really were, you'd have to hear them live. This is a Glass Harp at Carnegie Hall, and I believe this was them opening for the Kinks. Uh, and this was from, oh geez, I don't know, was this 1972, I think it was, something like that, show in 1972. Anyway, uh, this is where the magic of this band really came across. Uh, they extend a lot of the arrangements, because at their, at their core, they really were a great kind of like jammy, proggy, hard rock band. Who did lots of cool folky stuff, and here you get uh, you know looking to look in the sky is here, ten minutes long, never in a long time is normal length. You got Do Lord changes, and then Can You See Me, which is uh, nearly a half hour long, and some amazing amazing playing on that. So yeah, uh, to me they probably were one of those bands you really wanted to experience live back in the day because I think their their studio stuff, while it has lots of really really good material, uh, to me are kind of hit or miss. Um, but again, it depends, because if, if you're not into the more kind of folky stuff, that may not be for you, but then they, they interject with some really good blistering rockers, and you know the guitar work is always something to look forward to. So, yeah. So that's my uh, ranking of Glass Harp. If you are a fan, let us know what you think. Again, these are the three, three early classic albums, and they got the Hourglass album from 2003, and then, of course, I would highly recommend checking out the Carnegie Hall set, which is uh, really, really good, and a masterful guitar player, masterful guitar player. You know, he's one of those guys that, you know, years ago, uh, I always heard his name, but I always heard him in the Christian rock acoustic music circles, um, acoustic folk, acoustic pop, that sort of thing. And then uh, a good friend of mine says, well, you know, did you ever listen to his early bands? And a glass harp, and I'm like, he goes, that would probably be right up your alley. So I investigated these, and I was like, oh, there's lots to really like here. So, so yeah, so if you've never listened to glass harp, I think uh, this would have appeal to a lot of people who watch the channel uh, who are into cool guitar music or maybe just like early 70s music and kind of folky, proggy, rock based stuff, right? I think there's lots of appeal here. Uh, if you love the flute, Good amount of flute on here. Loads of great guitar, both acoustic and electric, and uh, really nice mix of styles, right? So, and great vocal harmonies. Do want to mention that? So, go check them out. Rank them as you like them down in the comments below. And visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together. All the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before you leave. Also, down below, we got the links to our Ko-Fi page, our channel donations, our merch page, and our Cameo page. So thank you in advance for all your support there. And we'll see you uh, you know, tomorrow morning uh, once again with my uh, top albums of, of the uh, year countdown as well as we've got coming up on Tuesday in the Prague seat. It's album study once again. We're going to be talking about Dream Theater's debut and Dream and Day Unite with special guest star Mr. Mike Portnoy himself, so do not miss that. Uh, loads of fun. We just recorded that uh, recently, so I think you guys are going to enjoy that show. Very, very cool. And then, uh, you know, more things coming up this week. you got new album reviews on Wednesday and uh, Friday morning at the Funhouse with Martin and UK Connection on Saturday and, of course, ranking the albums one week from today. Uh, next Sunday, which I believe 
will be Rick Labonte and myself uh, ranking the catalog, our top well, our top ten albums from the Guess Who. So uh, that should be next Sunday. If it's not next Sunday, it'll be the Sunday afterwards, and I'll have something else for you next uh, next Sunday. As soon as Rick gets back from his uh, his uh, vacation, uh, we'll just touch base. But I'm pretty sure that's going to happen next week. So till then, I'm P. Pardo. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you real soon. Bye bye.